Good morning and welcome to TOS Television. This is the conversation on your digital first Pan African news network, TOS Television. It's a beautiful Monday morning here in Abuja, and I am Sagir Ibrahim. And I'm Adesua Osiye. Good morning, everyone. Good, good morning, morning. Sagir. Good morning, good morning Adesua. Yeah. How was your weekend, first of all? Splendid, actually. So, what happened during the weekend was I rode on a power bike and I had amazing fun. Okay, well, I have reservations, first of all, because <laughs> On Friday, the chief of army staff, we lost our chief of army staff, and it was quite hectic. Very sad, actually. Actually, it was a very, very unfortunate very event. It dealt a event. huge blow on the nation's yeah. drive and yeah. fight against insecurity across, yeah. you know, the country, and yeah. it was a huge blow to Nigerians as a whole. And on a Saturday, you were cruising around town on a power bike. I had to get this one. Do you even love your country? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think we'll, we'll, we'll talk, we'll talk about that later, that, yeah. definitely. Okay, so um, let's quickly kickstart the program uh, with the quote of the day. At the first sign of pain, you need a solution that you can trust to provide effective relief and is gentle on the stomach. Try Panadol Caplets for relief from headaches, body aches, and fever. With Panadol's Optizop formula, the tablet gently breaks down in the stomach, quickly absorbs, and starts providing pain relief in 15 minutes. For fast and effective pain relief that you can trust, try Panadol Caplets. This has been Medifacts for Panadol. Welcome back and we go straight into developments across Africa and we go straight to Nigeria where the chief of army staff Atahiru Ibrahim dies in a plane crash. Nigeria's chief of army staff um, Ibrahim Atahiru is dead. It was gathered that the army boss alongside 10 other aides died in a plane crash on his way back from Kaduna State due to bad weather caused by heavy rainfall. Yeah, that's quite sad actually. Yes, I think it was the same day that we were, you know, happy that the army has finally, you know, according yes. to them, killed yes, yes. the leader of the dreaded Boko like Haram sect. And then in the evening, we heard that the chief of Just quite passed. Unfortunate it was quite news. unfortunate. And I pray that may the souls of um, those who departed rest yeah, in peace and may God grant the families of those who lost someone, you know, um, fortitude to bear the loss. Exactly. All right, moving away from Nigeria to um, some sub Saharan Africa, in some sub Saharan Africa, where Ramitan's flu to sub-Saharan African nation is estimated to have declined by 12.5% in 2020. According to the Global Knowledge Partnership on Migration and Development, the decline was almost entirely due to its 27.7% decline in remittance flows to Nigeria, which alone accounted for over 40% of remittance flows to the region. This is also partly due to the high percentage on the Naira US dollar exchange rate in informal markets and an unexpected policy directive requiring the agent banks of money transfer operators to pay out in US dollars or hard currency rather than the Naira. I think what this has taught us is whenever Nigeria is hit by a form of economic challenge, the entire sub-Saharan Africa, Africa. In fact, Africa as a whole is always affected. Affected. I mean, yes, Nigeria is the negatively. biggest economy in sub-Saharan Africa. Exactly. So there's it's, I think it's just it's just normal that when, when we're here, it, it affects. Because a lot of trade and a lot of things happens here. Mm. So when we, there's a devaluation of Naira and all of that, so they get to also feel it. Actually. Yes. Okay, so moving on. Kenya opens new deep sea, deep water port for business expansion, first ship docks. And the Kenya deep water Lamu port is reported to have docked its first ship. The port links Kenya's vast northern region and neighboring nations to the sea. According to Kenya's president, Uhuru Kenyatta, he said, two more berths will be completed by the end of this year, completing the first phase of construction. Yes, I mean, we're all on for development across the yes, you know, African nations. So I mean, anything that breaks development to any African it's country. It's always a good thing, you yes, know, and this time, thing. you know, um, having an extra seaport is yeah. going to um, add to transnational and transatlantic trade. Trade, you know? yeah. yes. So definitely. Okay, so um, we go straight to COVID-19 updates across Africa. And um, when we come back, it will be newspaper review and newspaper headlines. Do stay. <music> Olá 
app is now available. You can now catch up on our breaking news, stream our programs live. Watch out for the latest update on sport and politics as they unfold. You can also get notifications for our upcoming programs and events. All these on our TOS TV Network mobile app. Available on Apple Store and Google Play Store. TOS TV News from Africa by Africans. Being a journalist means in-depth analysis that unravels hidden truths, that question the status quo and fact-checks government. These criminal elements hiding under the cloak of surveillance contractors are the APC elements. Do you have facts to prove that? that? Being a journalist means waking up every day with a burning desire for peace, equity and justice for all citizens. We're being told that the choice you have is to take the lesser of two evils. It means patriotism, where the prison of objectivity and accountability. It means giving my platform to the masses to discuss issues that matter to them. Some of them, if they bring budget and the budget they lose, some of them sleep. They're going to ask, how much do you own? I have it. Thereby shaping government policies and laws. My name is Osasu Ignatia, and I am the People's Journalist. Welcome back. We move straight into newspaper headlines from this morning, starting with the Blueprint newspaper. Uh, I'm going to be starting with the banner headline there on insecurity. Bandits abduct 14 in Kaduna NAF rescue scores. Um, that's on page six. There are four riders under that headline. The first one, 20 gunmen invade FCT, abduct father and son. Police foil abduction of motorists in Oshun. Abuja Monarch urges more surveillance. Cleric warns on another terrorist group. And then just underneath a picture of the day where we see the inspection of the um, Lagos Ibadan Rail project. NDLEA intercepts 8 billion Naira cocaine. Arrest drug kingpin at Lagos Airport. Seizes $24,500 offered as bribe to compromise investigation. You can find that on page 5. And on Kaduna Crash, accident investigators begin analysis of um, black box. Um, there's a couple of headlines on the Blueprint newspaper this morning. You could get yourself a copy, you know, to fully abreast with everything that's happening on that newspaper. Okay, and on the Daily Times newspaper this morning, we'll start with the banner headline, again, Nigeria exits recession. Um, and just beneath that is the picture of the day where we see a couple of um, APC governors. And right under that, we see um, some other headlines, ban on open grazing, Southwest APC leaders um, back Southern governors on open grazing, restructuring others. Death in cell, how father of three died in congested task force cell. Um, NECO, 6.5 billion Naira contract. Senate questions NECO over failure to follow due process. Um, these and other stories could be found on the Daily Times newspaper of today. Do get a copy. And away from the Daily Times to the Daily Trust, started from the very top, Tinubu governors, other Southwest leaders reject secession, secession rather, and then moving Away from that, to the banner headline on the Daily Trust newspaper, four policemen, 44 others killed in gunmen attacks. The first rider under the headline, police stations attacked in Eboni, Zamfara, three kidnappers lynched in Adamawa, five herders killed, 59 cattle shot in Plateau, and the last rider says Sokoto villagers flee to Niger Republic. You can find that story on page five. And then uh, another, you know, very obvious headline there says, intense lobby as Buhari shops for new army chief. Ali Kefi Hamotu Staram orders touted jettison ethnicity, expert tells president. Okay, and on Business Day newspaper this morning, we start with the obvious headline, Nigeria's largest FMCGs profit far from pre-pandemic levels, despite recovery signs. And just beside that, um, thirst for debt, companies borrowing to remain robust in 2021. 
And under that, we see um, FMDQ Exchange welcomes BUA Cement's 115 billion naira bond, largest in Nigerian debt market. And under that, Nigeria's quarter one GDP data show poverty still on the rise. Uh, you can get this and other stories on the Business Day newspaper of today. Yes, and that was the that's the last you know newspaper we'll be looking at this yeah. morning. Just get yourself a copy of any of those newspapers to be fully abreast of what's happening in the country. All right, so we're going to go on a break now, and when we come back, I'll be taking you through what is trending on social media. Always remember, this man I have to my sense you decide to really like kickbox. You deserve a break. You can indulge in a cup of three in one Cadbury hot chocolate. Cadbury hot chocolate indulge. Now available in the 450 grams pouch. Welcome back. It's about that time where I take you through what is trending on social media. What has been trending on social media in the last 24 hours? But you know, before we get into all of that, you have to follow um, TOS TV Network across all social media platforms. That's TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, subscribe to TOS TV Network on YouTube so you do not miss out on an amazing lineup of content that we have there for you. You can also stream the conversation and other programs we have on www.tostvnetwork.com. All right, moving back into what's trending on social media. So the hashtag Adamu Garba has been trending on social media in the last 24 hours. So former presidential candidates of Nigeria's 2019 general election has been trending on social media following his public condemnation of the absence of the president, vice president and leadership of the National Assembly at the burial of Nigeria's chief of army staff. Um, Nigerians, however, are not having it as a claim. He lacks the moral justification to make those statements. So it's not new. We all know that the chief of army staff passed on, you know, um, during the weekend and a lot of, you know, talks back and forth has been ongoing um, because of that. And then Demu Garba also had something to say, but as I said, Nigerians were not having it. So I'm going to read out a few tweets to that regard for you. The first one is from Azuroye and he says, one thing I like about Adamu Garba is that for every sensible tweet his handler puts up when he's sleeping or attending to other important matters, he will always come back on another interesting topic to spew his usual cow dung. And then the next one is from I Know Tayo. I almost thought Adam Garba was making sense. Then I remember 2023 is approaching. Okay. And then the next one is from at Omogbaja Piamila. Even Adamu Garba, who do you usually meant, knows that the presidency's absence at the burial of the uh, chief of army staff is unacceptable and inexcusable. But here you are doing what slaves do. And then in uh, response to that, uh, you can't be making excuses for the many excesses of this government and expect such a person to be normal. You can't be normal mentally, physically, and psychologically. You could surely guess out. <laughs> I think I like that one, even though it's a little bit sarcastic. But I, I still want to ask you what you think about this one. I'm sorry, I always put people on the spot on this segment, so I'm going to put you on the spot today. Uh, well, uh, for me, I feel everybody is entitled to their own opinion. Mm. So if he feels strong or he holds a strong opinion about um, the president's absence or the leadership of the National Assembly and um, the vice president at the burial of the um, chief, late chief of army staff may so rest in perfect space. Then he's entitled to his own opinion, but then he has to remember, I think over the weekend I read a particular memo, it wasn't credited to any source, mm. and it stated that the president and the vice president and a couple of other high profile individuals in government would be unable to attend such events, especially the president, because um, a 48 hour security clearance has to be done, done. on such places before mm. the president would be able to attend. Okay. So in a situation where the chief of army staff dies and the next day he 
is buried. You don't expect to see the president, rather you see a representative of the president there. So I think that gives credence and it, it, it um, clears the air about um, the president and the vice president's absence. Mm. But then again, he's still entitled to his opinion. So. Okay. I mean, Nigerians didn't know. I don't think a lot of Nigerians knew that. Yeah, a couple, of, a couple of people yeah, actually so don't know. And like I said, it, I, I don't know um, yeah, how where exactly it came, where it came all of that exactly. stuff, So it, the back and forth, it could be anything. I mean, I'm just going to, I just want to see where all of this leads and then how, what landing we're going to get. Well, we're all watching. And like, exactly. Whatever happens, I mean, we'll bring it back on the conversation. Of so. course, that's why we're here. <laughs> okay, that's it for what's trending on social media here on The Conversation. We'll go on a break now. And when we come back, we'll be bringing you the big story. size find it with the new etel data plans dial star 141 hash now to get the plan that suits you etel the smartphone network Welcome back. It is still the conversation on your digital first Pan-African news network, TUS Television. And do remember, you could connect with us on our various social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at TUS TV Network. And you could also read some of our content on our website at www.tustvnetwork.com. You could watch some of our videos and keep an update on our content on YouTube by, and also subscribe to our channel at TUS TV Network. It is the big story and today's focus is going to be on Nigeria's borrowing policy the China Loan and the Sovereign Guarantee Clause. The discussion examines Nigeria's relationship with China, its growing indebtedness to the Asian nation, and the implication of some questionable clauses in the Memoranda of Understanding between the both nations, one of which is the Sovereign Guarantee Clause. Now, joining us today to discuss more on this issue is Mr. Aliu Audu, and he is an economist. Thank you so much for joining us on the show, Mr. Aliu. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, so, Mr. Aliu, let's get straight into it. Now, according to the Debt Management Office, um, there are guidelines which the government must abide by when taking or soliciting loans, both locally and internationally. Now, in your opinion, has the current administration um, followed some of these guidelines, or in fact, all of these guidelines? Well, um, um, loans are project-specific. That means every loan is meant for a particular project and they come with different sets of guidelines. Mm -hmm. If we are borrowing from China, it has its own set of guidelines. Okay. If we are borrowing from the local banks, it has its own set of guidelines. Okay. Now, how do you establish it, whether the guidelines have been uh, followed? You know, it's uh, quite a difficult one because you have to be able to know what, you know, the project is all about. Mm -hmm. And one of the most important important guideline, especially in terms of China, Nigerian loans, is they are project specific. And as such, you have, uh, you have to, they don't necessarily give money for a particular project. They provide the expertise as well as provide the materials that will see that the project is completed. Mm -hmm. So different projects have different guidelines and specifications. Okay, so let's look at Nigeria's debt, debt profile. In five years, that's from 2015 to 2020, mm. it has risen by 136%, yeah. right? And then looking at you know the state of the economy and then the value of the Naira to the dollar as it is now, do you foresee any reduction in you know, this debt profile? Well, um, let the truth be told. Uh, do I see any reduction? I don't know because I'm not the government. Mm. Recently there was a request just last week to borrow about 2.3 trillion. Mm. So I don't know what, I have not gone into the specifics of it, but mm. 
looking at the pattern, I think it's still increasing. Now, my greatest worry is, are these projects being executed? Mm. What are these loans taken for? Are they being executed? I remember we took, when I was a banker about 10 years ago, when, uh, you know, I was uh, a banker in one of the banks, and I did come across such borrowings for infrastructure. So what are we saying? We have been borrowing for railway. We have borrowed in the past for railway. Are this railway being done? Now we have railway from Kaduna to Abuja. We have recently from Itape to Wari mm. and all that. Is that all that has been borrowed? In the past, we've heard that money has been borrowed for railway in Lagos. Right now, there's no proper railway system in Lagos. So the most, the most important point, the focal point is, has been, these projects are, have been borrowed, have they been executed? Mm. I think that is one of the most important guidelines, and that's what we should concentrate on, because it wouldn't make sense. You're borrowing to do a particular project. The project is not completed, and you are borrowing more. Every country borrows. Borrowing is not a bad thing. But are you borrowing to achieve the project that you are actually borrowing for? Yes. Okay. Now, so still on that thought, um, according to the Minister of Transport, Roti Miyamichi, he said, China can only go after and take back the same assets built with the loaned fund. And if the assets become depreciated, the both parties have to negotiate which assets they can go after. Now, seeing that some African countries have lost critical infrastructures, yeah. you know, in the past due to this clause, do you think the government's agreement to these terms might lead to the same as well? That is losing critical infrastructures. It's definitely. They cannot give you, borrow your money for nothing. Mm. You have to secure it against something. Mm. And if you borrow money for a particular project and you do not do it, that's where the sovereign guarantee comes in. Sovereign guarantee is not limited to that project alone. If, for example, you know, the project is not done completely or is, it's not an asset enough for them to take over, there are other federal government assets that they can take over. That's the essence of having a sovereign guarantee. It's a sovereign bond. They can go after your external reserve. They can go a lot of, after a lot of other assets. So, uh, you know, it is during the negotiation that the the asset they are going to go after will be established. Mm -hmm. I don't have a copy of the particular China-Nigeria uh, full agreement, but, you know, the sovereign guarantee means that if you fail, we can go after your assets, any of your assets. Mm -hmm. That's what sovereign guarantee is all about. Yeah, oh, okay. bring, bring so, me to sorry. something I wanted to ask you. I'm, I'm sorry, bring me something I, I wanted to mention. Because looking at today's, you know, highly competitive, globalized economies, China being one of them, mm -hmm. shouldn't Nigeria be threading, you know, the path of caution with, you know, all of this borrowing, especially from China? Yeah, um, there's nothing wrong with borrowing. Mm. Because every country borrow. Mm. Now, let me even run you through figures. Mm. Russia mm. has borrowed 100% of their GDP. Mm. UK has borrowed maybe 50%. US has borrowed, a, a lot of countries borrow. As a matter of fact, let's be frank, Nigeria has one of the bo lowest borrowing ratio. Mm. But the problem is, where the issue is, is that this country that you see have high borrowing profiles. They also have high infrastructural development. Mm. They borrow against this infrastructure and they are being done. Now, if we have borrowed in maybe about $90 billion, do we have that to show that mm. we have done projects to that amount? Mm. That is where the question is. Mm. If not, borrowing is actually a good thing. Nigeria has one of the lowest debt profile in the world. Mm. But we don't want to pass the burden of death to the next generation without having anything to show for it. Mm. Now, what happens is that the infrastructure normally pays for themselves. Mm. For example, now, China built one of the largest uh, bridge in the world. For it took about five years to build for about twenty-one billion dollars. Now they will set up uh, taxes on those bridge, which over time pay for itself because it's a high-traffic bridge. So once you're borrowing, you're borrowing to do a particular infrastructure like railway, mm. and the railway is supposed to pay for itself. Mm. But what happens is, if you borrow for a particular infrastructure, you don't now do that infrastructure, and then you pass on the debt burden to the next generation it's not good. It becomes what they call a debt trap. Mm. And that's what we're creating for ourselves. Okay, so sir, another one. Um, I just wanted to ask quickly, you earlier spoke about um, 
the sovereign guarantee clause mm -hmm. and China going after projects once um, the projects which money was borrowed for does not when meet up with the yeah. amount and cannot pay for itself. Now, the question I want to ask is, when they negotiate, that is the government and China actually negotiate and they go after this project, is the takeover going to be permanent or is it going to be temporary? How does that work? Well, I don't think it's going to get to that because at the moment you can restructure your facility. Mm -hmm. If you're giving, let's say, for the sake of, uh, you're giving $1 million now and you cannot pay for it, uh, you know, you probably put it in a particular road project and the project is not yielding as you expect. They can say, okay, well, since your road project is not yielding enough money to pay back for the project, what other assets do you have to pay for it? Mm. Can we now look into your other, maybe your external reserves? Can you take from there to pay us? Can we look at your Ports Authority? Mm. You're making money from Ports Authority. Can that pay us? Mm. Can we look into your customs? Can that pay us? That is the work of the Ministry of Finance to renegotiate, you know, these loans. Mm -hmm. Now, I do not think we have gotten to the point whereby we cannot pay for loans mm -hmm. because, you know, our debt profile, to be frank, in the world is still one of the lowest. So, so there's, we no are not, there's no cost for alarm. But my, where the cost for alarm is, is are these borrowings being executed mm -hmm. on the projects they are being borrowed for? Because... If you don't, then you are transferring the debt mm. to the future That's generation. True. And that becomes a debt burden. Mm. And it's more dangerous that people that are, have the high debt profile, because they are, borrow, they are borrowing and they are doing the infrastructure, and the infrastructure is paying for the borrowing. Yes. You are borrowing, you're not doing the infrastructure, and, and it's becoming a debt pro, a burden on, you know, on the yes. generations. Mm. And yes. it, com it becomes what they call a debt trap. Mm. At some point, your budget, you'll be allocating your budget a chunk of your budget to, to pay in pay debt, debt, while critical areas like recurrent expenditure, infrastructure are not being done. And that's why you hear salaries are not paid, mm. soldiers are not paid, mm. it creates insecurity, it creates economic quagmire. Mm. So, so in, in, in one minute, because we're about to wrap up now, in one minute, if, we, if Nigeria was to start working, you know, on reducing its debt profile, reducing the numbers, what should we be looking at doing? Well, if we are trying to, is to repay back our debt, mm. is to look for other areas to generate revenue from, to repay back our debt. Nigeria is a very blessed country. We have agriculture, we have solid minerals, we have agile quota still rolling mill, still there, capability of generating a lot of money. We're not tapping into our resources. Mm. I mean, we have a lot of leakages in the economy. We have gold being uh, mined in Zamfara, these are natural resources that are supposed to go to the government mm. and create income streams for the government. Mm. So we need to tie a lot of leakages mm. and develop a lot of other areas mm. that we can generate revenue. For example, I'm from Kogi State. Mm. We don't, if you, we have a lot of iron ore, that's why we have Ajaukota mill in, mm. uh, in Kogi State. Yeah. Now, we, you cannot transport, you cannot mine iron ore and transport it by road. Mm. You need the sea or you need railway. Mm. We don't have a, a good railway system. So all that solid mineral is sitting on the ground untapped. That is revenue for the government. So we need to wake up. We need to do a lot. Nigeria is a blessed country. Look at Israel. Israel is doing extremely well. You know, it's gone very far. Amongst its, in the Middle East, is the best economy mm. with little natural resource. We have abundance. Agriculture, solid minerals, human resources. So it's, you know, our... Our path to prosperity and growth is unlimited. We just need to get to the drain board and do what we have to do. All right. Thank you so much for yeah. joining us for on the show this show. morning. Thank you All so right. much. Thank you. Thank and thank you guys for sticking with us on the conversation this morning. Do not forget the conversation comes to you every weekday. That's Monday to Friday on TOS Television Network. And also you can be a part of the conversation by following us across all social media platforms. That's TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course subscribe to TOS TV Network on YouTube. You can also stream the conversation on www.tos TV network become. Thank you again. My name is Adesu Alsui. And I am Sagir Ibrahim. Thank you so much for staying with us.